a bit. He continues again today, probably going to set records right here in the tri-state as well as across the country. So keeping our children safe during the heat wave. Dr. Eric Kirkendall with Cincinnati Children's Hospital is here. Good to see you, Eric. Thanks, and Abby. we'll talk about, we actually talked about the elderly yesterday from Maple Knoll Communities. We had a, a rep there and talking about the elderly and caring for them during the heat. But let's talk about children first. Mm -hmm. So there are three main reactions to extreme temperatures, which we're going to see today, triple digits, and then with the humidity even higher. Heat stroke, heat exhaustion, and heat cramps are the three. What are the differences in those? Uh, well, heat stroke is the one that you really worry about. Um, that's the ex where exposure to heat leads to things like altered mental states, kids get confused, disoriented, that sort of thing. That's sort of the worst case scenario, um, and it can eventually lead to seizures as well. Um, thankfully, it's the minority of the cases that we see with heat problems, heat exposure. Um, then heat exhaustion is just sort of kids get a little overloaded being out in the heat so much. They have issues sweating. They may um, just sort of get a little bit dizzy, lightheaded, that kind of stuff. But they're still there. They still answer questions appropriately. And then heat cramps is sort of the more minor, the, the most minor of those three conditions. And that's simply just cramping and overdoing it a little bit from the heat, um, causing minor issues. And I would think with children that are younger and maybe not um, exposed to these kinds of conditions, or if in fact you're traveling and you're going somewhere where you know heat is something that you're not used to mm -hmm. those are things that you need to be concerned with so what are some precautions we need to take on the front side with temperatures like we're experiencing yeah so I, I think the big thing if you're traveling to somewhere tropical or somewhere where there's a big change in, in heat um, then I think you, you have to go through a kind of an acclimation period so shorter stints outside that sort of thing with our temperatures nowadays it's not as big a deal but if you have a big even if we have a big wide um, swing in temperature here of 20 or 30 degrees that can that can matter so I think just sort of paying attention and getting helping get people acclimated to the high temps is the most important thing and um, the sort of common theme throughout all the, the um, treatments is just make sure you're keeping your children hydrated hydrated yeah, yeah. and that's what we heard yesterday with the elderly as well is just keeping them indoors and you know kids it's kind of hard because they want to be outside right they see the sunshine they see the swimming pool and they want to be outside playing all the time but maybe if you can limit that to the early morning or late afternoon and not as long of stay exactly. in the sun. Okay. Well, let's talk about should you get to that point and you see that your child is experiencing some of those symptoms you were talking about. What are some things that we can do in an emergency type situation before calling night or once we've called 911? Maybe it should it get to that point? What are some things we can do for them? Sure. I think the big thing is just limiting the exposure. So getting the child indoors in air conditioning if you have it. Um, even getting them in in the cool showers or baths. Um, and then uh, encouraging as fluids as much as you can. So you want to make sure that you're um, getting them water, Gatorade, whatever. Um, it, for the most part, it doesn't matter what you're, you're able to get them. And water is just as good as any of the sports drinks. All right, so get them inside. Call 911. Keep them cool and give them lots of fluid. Mm -hmm. All right, Dr. Eric, thanks so much. Thanks nice for having me. Absolutely. Uh, coming up next on the